<laughs> Everything crashes. Hey everybody, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. I am back. I figured that I would do a back to work. Uh, I've been in the shop for a little over a month now, just trying to um, find a new normal. So I figured I would take you guys and make some you guessed it, bud vases. Uh, my son-in-law helped get all these handles off for me, got them put in the tumbler. Everything came out great. So I'm just going to get started making the handles to make the spoons like this. And I'll get them flattened out so they lay flat so whenever I put my handle on there will have a place to um, solder it to right here and the bottom and we'll get all of those done I have to make at least 50 tonight but I'm gonna spare you the hours and hours of doing all of this <laughs> so my goal is one hour hey Siri set a timer for 60 minutes 16, not 16. Hey Siri, set a timer for one hour. Confirm. There we go. One hour. Once my alarm goes off, I will spare you the rest of the hours. Hi, Yvonne. I am happy to be back. I've been in the shop for a little bit, but I haven't been up on... YouTube for two months, I think. Uh, so I am back in the shop. I got everything hooked back up and I figure it's time to start getting some work done. Uh, please feel free to jump in on the comments. <laughs> happy dance, happy dance. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back. Um, finding a new normal has been, uh, is not a thing right now. Uh, so staying busy though, and I got to get all of these done today, nice and shiny. I always like to tumble them before I uh, bend them. That way, they're already shiny, so whenever they go into... Oh, and it also cleans my spot. So this being clean helps my solder stick, and I don't have to worry about it having grease or tarnish or anything on it. Um, I have to make a whole bunch. So I'm going to do one whole one, real fast. Uh, let's use this guy. So my son-in-law, Jeremiah, um, he actually, he watched my video. <laughs> and uh, I kind of helped him along. And he got all the knife handles separated and then he sanded them down cleaned up the edge and sanded the the bottom piece just that little extra flat spot really helps the solder stick in that one spot so we're going to use this handle i have a whole box of handles right here i want that one on there we go right here there's 60 some odd handles, I think. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. I gave up on that a long time ago. Um, I actually just picked up a set of masonry bits. They have the, the tops on them. If you can get enough to where you can wiggle out the blade, you can use those masonry bits to get that most of that mortar out. What I do really is I'll take my Dremel tool and I'll cut down the sides um, like this. I'll cut down all the sides. And I've actually recently been um, punching those out and turning them into um, earrings. I don't think I have a video on it yet. Come on. Open. Make sure the mic doesn't get caught everywhere. So these are the handles. And what I did was I took my my little round punches and I punched out all the pieces and the patterns I wanted in different sizes. You just want to make sure that you double. What I did was I did one side and then I put it up against the other side and traced it out with my uh, fine tip sharpie. That way I had pairs. I didn't do that the first time I made them. But this is what I do with the ones that are filled. And there's still a pain to get off. Um, I try to not mess with them and sell them on eBay or uh, on to uh, Facebook Marketplace. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I really don't like working on them. Uh, I will if I have to, but what I have done um, before is I've used... I don't think I have one out here. Basically, I use... Come on. I've used a bit like this. I'm going to shut the autofocus off. Camera autofocus. There we go. So it's a bit like this, but it's this long. Like most of this is all point. And what I what I do there is let me apply that, get out of that. Um, so what I do is I'll take this and I'll like drill it into the sides around the uh, the blade and I'll kind of work that out and then I'll pull the blade out and after the blade comes out then I go to those bits um, like I said it's still a lot of work I haven't personally found anything that's worth it <laughs> um, but if that's all I had to work with, I would make it work some way. Oh, and once you get that off, you still have to clean up the inside. And I use these little uh, what are they called? Um, each one has a little bit different grit impregnated into it. Um, they're pretty soft, um, sanding discs. I think that's it, maybe. So muriatic acid, I would be worried about that eating the silver off. Um, because that's the stuff you put down drains to, uh, clear the drains and it will actually stain your stainless steel. So I would test it out on the silver plate first 
because I'm pretty sure it's gonna just eat everything. Um, okay, so we're gonna do one of these real quick. Uh, let's see. Let's get this guy over here. And let's see where we're at. Okay. And let's get this autofocus turned off. Here we go. Get that to focus in. There we go. Okay. So my customer wants this handle portion with this curved towards the knife handle. So to do that, we're going to start with the pattern side down. I'm using the second size of um, pin from a flat wearable vendor. So this is the big one. This one works a lot. I'm also in the shallowest block. I'm in this block here. Yeah. Radial bristles. Yep. They make a tremendous difference. Um, I have them here on, I drilled holes for them to be on my thing here. Um, and I keep them in order. So the white for me is 2400 grit. Green is a thousand. This one should be like 600, 450. Can't tell that one. 120 and I, this one's probably 60. I kept forgetting which one was which. Okay, now autofocus, you're just irritating me. There we go. So we're gonna do one real quick for the people who have some work to do of their own. So let's see, let's get this over here. Hopefully it won't make, hopefully the sound's not too bad. So I'm just making this curved edge. I push this in with the curved edge all the way down. <clears throat> and now I'm just going to hammer this up. I found that gives me a nice uh, edge. Now right here, I'm going to bend, I'm putting my pin right here. And then I'm going to lift this around the pin so it's not a, a full pinch point. Oh. Yeah, I forget things like that. I do believe that they're in the uh, the tools list down in the com or not comment, but the description. All right, so I'm going to turn this on, and we're going to take this and come over to this side of my mess. This is just a fire brick. I need to get set up for this. And I have to make sure that this swings easily around everything. Oh. 
All right, so I want this to be able to be where I can see it this direction. Let's see. Can you see me from there? So I want to be able to turn this around. I'm doing most of my work right here. And I'm going to be turning it this way so I can see down this direction to make sure it's level this way. So we're going to start here. Let's see if I can get you up a little bit higher. Mm, wrong way. And let's get the autofocus shut off. Okay. So first, we bent this. Now we need it to be straight. We need it to be flat. Uh, that's where this little guy comes into play. Um, so whenever it's not sitting flat, I'll flip it upside down, kind of pop down in the middle. So now it's up a little bit. I'm just going to hold it in place. There we go. Nice and flat. Now I'm going to take my finger here. I'm going to put it in between the spoon and the handle. The back of it is in... <laughs> How do I get that shot? The back of it is in my palm. And I'm just going to bend this over. So what that does is it makes the handle come way over. By putting my finger here, it allows it to not make a sharp spot. And we check it one more time for flat. Okay. So I need one more tool. Oh no, did I bring my torch back? Here, tools, tools, tools. Sorry guys, I thought I had everything ready. There we go. Alright, so this is a pair of tweezers. I'm putting it right one side into it. So the side that I'm going to be heating is the side that doesn't have the tweezers on it. Now this part is one of the parts I figured out after I did way too many the hard way. If you start with this down here and you lift it up, the pressure that's going, the pressure that this is forcing down is going to keep this where we want it. that back a little bit so I do want it touching there it is straight this way for me I'm gonna turn this and it is way off so this has to go that way and that one goes right there check the straightness again vertical there and this side are vertical. 
Here, torch, torch, torch. Um, I think it's on the freezer. I will be right back. Here, torch, torch, torch. Well, alrighty then. My torch is gone. Let's see. Somehow I lost my torch. I don't know if this thing has any fuel in it. Okay, I threw a lighter up here earlier. There it is. Yep, yeah, that one's no, no good. He was using it there. I know where it's at. I will be right back. Let me bring up this. I'll be right back. It is raining a lot. Whew. Let me know if you get static or a lot of noise. Gus took it. <laughs> yeah. What? What, Gus? Did you take it? Actually, I just found it. It was actually in the car. I have no idea why, but that's where it was. Um, my brain found it. Um, okay, I need glasses. And I need some rosin coarse solder. All of this is listed down in the description uh, down below. And what I'm basically doing now is I'm just heating where I want the solder to flow. So whenever I'm heating this piece here, whenever I'm heating, Whenever I'm heating this part right here, on your side, right here, 
I'm just heating that spot. I'm not heating up the whole piece. I just want the heat right here so this melts. And then I'm going to heat on this side of the base and then on this side of the base. And you'll see me flip over. I'll put my heat on this side and I'm going to feed my solder in on this side. Because the solder flows towards the heat, it should pull all the way to this side. And then I have my little handy dandy spray bottle. And spraying it is going to set it. And then down here, I have a coffee container that has a bunch of water in it. You can use a bucket or whatever. Um, I need a fast key for this to switch this over. Um, all right, let's get this done. So I'm going to turn this right to here. I've already lined it up. Let's flip this over. So let me know if the noise, if I start rubbing up against this thing too much, I'll try and put it in a different spot. All right, that heated up quickly. to get my stuff organized. All right, let me cool this off and I'll show you what we created. solder <laughs> that was weird so now we have our bud vase nice and straight pretty straight this way sometimes your handle here will be a little offset um, I normally fix that before This got hot really quick. I'm surprised. But there's one. 49 left to go. <laughs> so for everyone who can't stay around forever, there's one. Uh, so production mode, I do everything in stages and in batches. So all of this stuff will go right here and wait for the second stage put that over there right now we are in the let's bend spoons forever phase you can go for there i've got that i'm gonna put the lid on this guy And that's it. So let me bring this right over here. And see what you guys can see. Oh, right here. Thank you, Jazzy. I'm glad to be back on too. I was looking at one of my videos and I'm like, two months? And then I got sad. And then I got past it. 
and now I'm here. There we go. That's probably as good as I can get it focused. Okay. So production mode is exactly what it sounds like. I do the same thing over and over again. And I'm actually going to use this bucket for my finished pieces. Um, as I bend these, you'll see a lot of times I will switch hands. So I've got my left hand holding this down and I'm pushing with my right because it gives me more dexterity or I have more strength in my right hand. And then this just goes all the way back. And it, it seems to work out with the teaspoons that if I run this all the way back to touch here, I can bend this down and it's in a really nice spot. And we turn this around. And then I lift it up and I'm pounding down just enough to get it to get that extra little squish. And it's been a couple days since I made one of these. Um, I'm just gonna switch you over to this camera here so we don't have to mess with this one. Okay. What I'm doing here is I'm making sure that it's landing flat because I don't want to have to mess with it again. Once it's in the bucket, it's, it's good. And so I'm going from over here where I bend it. So this is a large tablespoon. Same process, just it's a little harder because the throat obviously because it's bigger, you don't it's not going in as far. So here's my trick for that. I kind of put it on a wedge and I get it to go down a little bit. That allows me to put this further up and then I can come down at the angle I want. Switch over to here. Here this lip is way up so I'm gonna put down my pad because this is our top side we don't want to mar it so my bottom side I'm gonna take most of this out in the middle so that gives me a little bow this way Fold it in, and we're nice and flat. Whenever you're folding this, whenever you're turning it in, uh, be careful not to go too fast because sometimes they will crack. Uh, some, some metals will crack like that. So back to here, another tablespoon. So I'm making my first bend with it over this back side. That gives me a bend. And I just work it around like that. So get that bent.
The cool part about these big tablespoons, what kind of place ordered that many of those? So like a restaurant or something. Actually, it's a craft, not a craft. Um, it's an artisan shop. Um, I forget where they're at, but they sell antiques and other things. And they put the bud vases out on the tables. And they'll stick a flower in them. And they sell them all day long. Um, they probably go through 200, 250 a year. So quite a bit. Um, I sent them all of the ones I could make before we went to the hospital the last time. And whenever I was able to start working again, uh, they were down to nine and they were down to two by the time I got enough of them. Uh, made to for their order um but that was the first order this is the this is the second so this needs to be a full order um sometimes uh the wholesale they just want not real fancy and just everything a little bit different I just got this queen best pattern back in. I actually found some up here. I haven't had it in a long time, but I love bending queen best. It's hard enough. It's hard enough to do what you want it to do, but soft enough to be able to manipulate it. that's flat so we'll just bend this over and once once you do this bending make sure it's still flat and at this time you can check to see if it's straight or not also so I'm looking for this to be straight this way that was weird my camera just went weird see so normally I would take these and I would uh, clean and polish them up Put them in the tumbler and tumble them so they're nice and clean yeah it's it's really nice whenever jamie started getting really sick and that was around the same time COVID hit too um i started doing a lot more wholesale so I don't have to set up for my canopies, which is a lot of work. I love doing shows, but it's a lot of work. And with Jamie being sick, I didn't have any, any time for that. Yeah, I love Queen Bess. Uh, so what I did was instead of going through a whole bunch of my silverware cleaning it up and then tumbling it I just went through and I picked out all the shiny ones and I tossed those in the tumbler uh, because the shiny ones are gonna come clean the ones that are a little bit more tarnished they're not gonna come clean so fast so I kind of cheated with all of these um, I grabbed I think 60 something and then tossed them in the tumbler um, few hours later they were done and time to start putting stuff together again uh, 
I have some new exciting tools coming. I have been wanting to do lost wax casting for a long time now. So I can make my, uh, my one of a kind pieces. I can take those and make copies. So I can take down the price and theoretically do less work. Um, and it's another avenue of creation. Coin rings. I I almost started getting the stuff for those. And then I'm like, focus, Jeremy. You're, you're, uh, OCD is going to go nuts. Especially if I try something else. Because I really want to do lapidary too. And I have to go, focus, just focus. <laughs> uh, I just bought a 20 ton press. Which is probably going to get me in trouble. Um, stealing some more of my time. But being able to punch out the patterns from the trays. And being able to really make a lot of pieces from all of the amazing trays I've had. I've picked up over the years. Nice, nice and flat. Oops. <laughs> Went to the wrong camera. There's something weird going on with this computer camera. There we go. I try and find the most efficient way to do something and be able to repeat it. I had it right. So this one is bowed up in the middle. There we go. So with the last wax casting, I'm actually going to be 3D printing the the rings and the designs which I've been excited about I've been wanting to do for a long time and I finally saved up the money to be able to go in that direction of silversmithing a little bit <laughs> So this one has a big, big dimple in the middle of it. We can take that out, a lot of that out, just on our block here. Come on. It's a matter of one tiny spot. 
there. There we go. Okay. I thought Elmer Fudd was always rabbit hunting. Of course, they never got anything. Another reason why I'm doing this at this time is before I bend it over, I have more room to hammer here. So I can get all the way back here, but once I bend this over, I lose about half of my room. Sometimes it needs just a little tweak after. This is a nice soft one. And if you can't push it up with your thumb, use your mallet. I've had to do that on some of the really hard ones. And this, this hit, I'm hitting it up and, and not so much down. I don't want to curl this too much. And this one I'm doing it down and back. So I get it to go where I want. By getting that done, getting that hammered out, I don't have to go through that um, step in between all of the pieces again, because stopping to do that just makes things so much longer. You can also hit this in a direction, so you can hit it to the right or to the left and also down because you'll see this little piece here the middle piece you'll see it be off left or right wrong mallet there we go make sure it's straight this way we'll bend it right over okay yeah, squirrel. <laughs> yep, that's definitely it. Uh, I have the attention span of a two-year-old. And the ability to do anything I want with that. So it uh, definitely makes some days rough. And once you start getting into a rhythm, everything just goes a lot faster. Um, I have done so many of these. So many people commenting on the picture of Gus uh, that I posted on 
um, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I started a new, new Instagram because our other one was hacked and I can't get back into it because uh, Meta or whoever's running Instagram now can't look at a picture and say, hey, this is the same guy. So our new Instagram is Flatware Creations, still with two S's, but with the number two. And we'll start this whole process again. So if you haven't, stop over there. Um, I will be posting there and I'm going to try and figure out how to get it to post to Flatware Creations the, on Facebook again. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Right now it's posting to my regular page, um, my personal page, but I'll get it figured out. Either way, we're on Instagram again and I changed all of my passwords to something a lot more difficult. Yeah, the, the hacker actually gave me the password to get back in. So technically I can start to get into my account, but he changed the email and the phone number. So every time I need to get access to the account, ooh, that one went all weird. Uh, every time I try and get access, it wants to send those notifications to their phone number or email address. And I finally just said, nope, I'm just going to start another one and start from the ground up again, but not really. Uh -oh. I have all you guys, Facebook, Instagram, so we will build back up the the Instagram following. Oh. Oops. <laughs> I keep switching the wrong camera. Mm. So this one, um, this one, if you can see right there, it almost split. It didn't split, but it almost split once it got pressed sorry trying to there you go you can see the line right there so it just just barely cracked it but it's not broken well that was a odd musical change <laughs> i went from some classic rock to uh, I think it's Daughtry. <laughs> it is Daughtry. It's like, what? How? <laughs> How does that even fit? Um, the story behind the two S's. So, uh, on Etsy, if a name has ever been used before, it cannot be used again. So when I was doing the research for um, to see if anyone had used the name, uh, if that .com was available, if um, the email was available, I checked all of that stuff before picking the name. And uh, then when we got on Etsy, um, it was just originally 1S, but on Etsy, I guess it had been used before, but there was no trace of Flatware Creations before. Um, I couldn't find anything. So because that name had already been used, I added the extra S 
and that's where that came from. So then I changed all of the emails and the website and everything to the two S's. So now we, and then I took in my workbook, let's see, is it a green one? Yep. So this is, this is our logo. This way. So that is our logo. And this is all of the versions coming up to that. So you can see the one that we picked. And then, yeah, I tried all the different versions. And that is how Flatware Creations has two S's. Oops, wrong button. Right button, wrong button. And this one. I think my computer is about to die because do you guys see these little fuzzy marks on your side? Some right up here, some right here, <laughs> right there. Okay, now we're back to some <laughs> regular music. Ooh, that one's hard. You also want to be careful when hitting this when they're really hard because a lot of times because you have such a little, um, this is Queen Bess too, which is weird. Um, what will happen is you'll hit it and it will pop out. And you don't want it to slide out because once it slides out, it just comes flying back at you. So be careful, make sure you put extra pressure down when you're hitting these guys. And because I didn't get a big enough loop here, I'm gonna hit this down and make more of a loop. thought they were orbs. Um, it was definitely a good talking point and definitely made us stand out with the two S's. The hardest thing, you might be haunted. Oh, the, the little flashy thingies. Yeah. Pretty sure I'm not haunted. Oh, oh the tips. There we go. Um, yeah, I think my camera's going in the laptop. I think it knows that. I was looking at a new one 
well, just like this one, used, new to me. <laughs> uh, this just a um, a workstation computer. It was just taken out of an office and then refurbished. But it had the right processor that I wanted, the i7, Intel i7 chip, because it could handle the video a lot better than the i5 could. And it was in the ballpark of something that I could actually afford without having to buy Uh, without having to buy a two or three thousand dollar computer, okay. Some of them take a little tweaking to the side. And I know some of that is from my forming block because I've been using the same forming block for, ouch, four or five years now. Was that for eBay? It says I have four notifications. Oops, I didn't, didn't want to bend that yet. There we go. It worked out. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ending soon. <laughs> so you can see, I have been looking at new computers. <laughs> it's this, the same model so that I can um, just swap out everything for it 17 hours that's not 16 hours are you kidding me that's not early yeah they're all like 16 and 17 hours tell me whenever they're like 30 minutes 16 hours. A lot of these were days away. Don't need any of that. Um, yeah, in this computer, I put a bunch of extra RAM in it so it could handle the editing aspect. Um, so I figured if I got the same one, I wouldn't have to d go through so much. And basically I just take the hard drive out of this one. Oh, I forgot to say hi everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was on the wrong one again. Oh, this one's a beast. So I'm going to flip it over. So. Let's see if this it was even close. <laughs> so this one is very open here. It's all poofed up. 
the tips touching and that's pretty much it the tip in the back here so I have all this indentation here so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hit these edges all the way around because I want them flattened out and that side's not working so I'm gonna use the brass side remember this is still the bottom so we can mark up the bottom I'm just going around the edges and now I'm hitting the edges right here pretty straight turn that just a little bit there we go I'm going to bring you guys back there the uh, and maybe I can do this That's not going to help. Uh, I am happy to be back in the shop. That is for sure. I made a custom order for somebody I don't know if I've shown it to anyone yet there we go um, I love how you get the different shapes so we still have this curving in but the shape is so out there this is going to take a knife handle that has a flatter edge. So it'll get this one. And it won't touch. So it will end up looking like that. Yeah, this block is four years old, I think. I do have a new block. This is the new block. It's got all these different uh, spots. But I'm kind of like, I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to use it and get it all dirty. <laughs> so I keep using this thing. Um, some of the items that I make, I've only been able to make because of the size of that. Because I opened it up. Um because it has a slightly different shape. All right. Oh, you can't see anything there. Um, it is fun talking to you guys again. I always enjoy that.
And at this part, you have to remember that most of the weight is back here. So if it wants to tip back, that's okay. What you're looking for is a hit flat up here. So now that the weight is moved over, there we go. Um, the big ones are the same way, except a lot of times they don't have the flat surface. that one a little too far <laughs> see here again where we have that black gap And repeat. Everything looks straight. <laughs> I'm almost halfway done. Yay. Oh, that alarm? That was my timer for one hour. Is it one hour? Yep, one hour and 13 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this live stream and get all of these done. I have everything back here in the shop. So as I make things, I will continue to hop on. I do have one video edited i just need to make a little tweak to it so hopefully that will be soon um hmm let me see yep yeah, so everything is in here and i will be working some more in the shop I can hardly see out of those things. Uh, I'll be working in the shop more. I have a few special orders that I need to work on. I have this one here that I made everything except for the bezel cups and the stones. Um, it was really cool. Uh, let's see. I'll probably turn that into a short. And it looks like I'm going to be ordering another computer. <laughs> because of oh it went away <laughs> these little guys are here <laughs> uh, I think that's it if you haven't yet please like share subscribe uh, let me click that button there you go ding 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 um, it's funny because I can't hear the sounds but you can <laughs> so I will be back on uh, the next opportunity that I get thank you guys so much for coming asking so many questions and just hanging out with me so thank you very much I will be back soon
Have a great day.